Today we are going to build a brand new tier list in Rise of Kingdoms for 2024. You are probably saying, yo scumbag Spartan, we are not even in 2024. That's a clickbait. Well, it's not, because even though we are not in 2024 yet, they are not going to release new commanders until 2024, like 10 days or so left. So yeah, this tier list is actually for 2024. Now, as you can see, this is not a regular tier list. We don't have tiers. Instead, we have one march, two marches, plus three, niche and free. The best commanders will go into one march. This means even if you are using one march only from that troop type, these are the commanders that you should be using. Two marches, commanders in that tier are not going to be as strong as one march tier, but still if you're using two marches from that troop type, those are the commanders that you want to use. Three plus marches, I mean at that point, you are a main or even a purist. If you guys don't know what purist means, let's say you are an archer purist, that means you're only using archer commanders. You only have archer marches, nothing else. Then we have niche, garrison, rally, pretty self-explanatory, and the free ones. Now, you guys know me, I hate wasting time, so let's fill the free ones. I think that's all. Other than Flat, all of these commanders are coming from the gold keys, meaning that you will, over the course of time, you will be working on those commanders for free because gold keys are free. I mean, if you are spending gems on gold keys, I don't know what you're doing. But yeah, these commanders are free, so you should never, ever spend your universal sculptures on these ones. Now, let's start with the new latest and the greatest Archer Commanders. This one, Ashur Bani Pal. I think it goes into Niche, Garrison, Rally. The good thing about him is that he is a little bit versatile. Like, a bunch of his skills do also work in open field. But for an open field fighter, like a pure open fielder, low spender, free to play, mid spender, even whatever. Like, if you're not a Rally leader, I don't think you should be investing on this guy because he's just good, he's versatile. If you are a rally leader and if you invest on Ashur Banipal, you are getting a commander that is good in rallies, but also can be used in the field fighting. That's why I'm saying he's versatile. But if you only care about field fighting, you shouldn't invest on Ashur Banipal. And then we have Herman Prime. I think maybe it's going to be a little bit controversial, but I think he goes straight into one march category. If you are using only one archer march, you want Herman Prime as one of your commanders. I mean, he does a lot of things. Newly released commanders, they're always so, so good. Like, they have a bunch of extra skills within one skill. Like, he has defense, he has defense. Like, he has poison, AoE poison, 2,000 damage factor, three targets. And with a condition, you can recast his active skill. I think he's going to be insane in the field fighting. So, one march only, I will definitely have Herman. And then we have Gorgo goes into niche rally garrison and we have <laughs> liu che 100 percent one march category like this guy is in my opinion insanely powerful like because of this guy even at 5511 i benched my guan yu my expertise guan yu i mean i use guan yu for so long maybe i just got bored with my testing if you guys haven't watched that video uh, expertise Guan Yu did perform better than Liu Che, 5511 Liu Che, but I've been playing with Guan Yu for so long and I think it was time to replace him, so Liu Che goes into one march. Then we have Hou Chu Bing. Now, I want to talk about Hou Chu Bing and Joan of Arc together. I'm going to put Hou Chu Bing into two marches and prime Joan of Arc into one march category. Now, the reason is a little bit complicated because it all depends on your budget if you ask me you have all the sculptures and you're going to use one cavalry march only for field fighting i will most likely go with ho chu bing primary and nevsky secondary and speaking of nevsky let me put nevsky in the tier list as well 100 percent one march the question is why did i put ho chu bing to two marches and joan of arc to one march even though i said the best one would be ho chu bing primary and nevsky secondary the only reason is in my opinion, Ho Chu Bing requires to be expertised, which is 690 sculptures. However, with Joan of Arc, you can definitely get a lot of value out of her with only 190 sculpture investment. For Joan of Arc, your goal should be getting her to 5115. I know you need a little bit of luck, but I did it on the first try even in the live stream. Uh, so I've been using my 5115 Joan of Arc with a Nevsky primary and she's just working so, so good. So just because of there are like insane amount of sculpture differences, I put Joan of Arc into one march category because 5115 is just so good. 
And as I said, whole tubing requires to be expertise. But you can switch them around if you don't care about the number of sculptures that you need to use. If you're only after best of the best, I think whole tubing primary and Nevsky secondary is definitely the best one. But if you consider the number of sculptures that you need to spend, I would go with expertise Nevsky and a 5115 John of Arc. But for now, for the context, let's just put whole tubing into one March category because like they're just so good together. And then this shouldn't be a surprise. Zugelian definitely goes into one March category. And this brings us to our one cavalry march and one archer march, which is going to be Zugelian and Herman. Like he's just so good, probably the best archer commander in the game right now. But I mean, maybe Herman is going to perform better than him, but I doubt that. But even if he outperforms Zugelian, still Zugelian is going to be included in the one march because he's just better than all the rest of the archer commanders. Justinian, Niche Rally Garrison, Tariq Niche Rally Garrison. Just like Ashurbanipal, Tariq is also very versatile. Like if you're a rally leader and you invest it on Tariq, you can definitely use him in the open field as well. Sargon the Great, I think he goes into two marches because if you're going to use two infantry marches, you will probably have a Sargon with one other infantry commander. So definitely his place is two marches. Edo, goodbye. This guy niche rally garrison. Henry. I know that he is mainly a rally commander, but for field fighting, he is just miles better than all these rally garrison commanders. So I'm not going to put Henry in this category. Instead, I'm going to put him into three plus marches. If you are using more than three archer marches, you definitely want to have Henry on your lineup. Flavius goes here. Budica, two marches. Simple. She is the third best archer commander and definitely you want her to be included on your lineup if you are using two archer marches. Simple as that. CPO goes up here with Liu Che. 100% if you are using one infantry march, you want it to be Liu Che and CPO. I mean, CPO primary, Liu Che secondary in my opinion. So definitely he goes into one march. Honda is a niche XY. Now this time, if you are using three plus marches cavalry, XY definitely needs to be included in your lineup, but William goes to two marches. This is my exact cavalry configuration right now. I'm using two cav marches. One of them is Nevsky primary, 5115 Joan of Arc secondary, and the other one is Expertise Ho Chu Bing primary and William secondary. And William is at only 5551, but still works really, really good. Pakal, Niche, Nebu, just like Henry, goes to three plus marches. Definitely needs to be included if you're running multiple, I mean, more than three archer marches. Trajan has a niche role. Guan Yu goes to two marches for infantry. If you're using two infantry marches, you'll probably use CPO with Liu Che and Guan Yu with Sargon. This is most likely is going to be your configuration. So he goes into two marches category. Yan Ziska, niche garrison. YSG goes right next to Budika because the moment you start using two archer marches, once you have these four commanders, you are going to run Herman with Zuge Liang and Burika with YSG. And the beautiful thing about YSG is that he is just an early game commander. You are going to get his sculptures like you will have a lot of time until you get into Season of Conquest. You will have him expertise. And then in Season of Conquest, you will have his museum buffs. He's going to be like super, super good with Burika. And I definitely recommend using YSG if you're using two archer marches. Zenobia, Garrison, Tomris. I mean, I can put her into niche role, but again, using three plus archer marches, you definitely want to have Tomris in there. Gilga, mm, uh, probably not. Yeah, most likely I wouldn't even include him in three plus archer marches. I will just put him into niche. Artemisia, in my opinion, she goes into three plus marches because we have Tomris here and Artemisia Tomris just works so good. Because if you're using Tomris back in the day, the best pairing for Tomris was Edward because his skill cycle was so slow and Tomris could just apply many poisons before the skill damage onto the target. However, with Artemisia, you are kind of doing the same thing because she doesn't have a lot of rage regeneration. Plus, she also self-silences herself. It's very similar to using Edward of Woodside as primary to Tomris. Your skill cycle is going to be much slower than all other commanders in the game which will give Tomris time to apply maximum amount of poison stacks. This guy goes into niche. Alexander, if you're using three plus infantry marches, then probably you are going to have Alexander at some point. But 
definitely if you look at his skill set he's just falling off compared to new like latest release commanders not just infantry like every single latest release commanders are miles better than these early generation commanders which is a little bit sad but it is what it is a monitor i wouldn't probably include her not even in the three plus archer marches she just goes into niche garrison rally same as attila and takeda they're just so niche bertrand same wait oh my god i forgot to create a special role for charlemagne charlemagne just don't cj can either be included in three plus infantry marches or niche i would say three plus infantry marches would be better because when you talk about niche commanders we're talking about like pakal right because he is very specific he only has one use in my opinion but cj is going to be pretty decent if you're running multiple infantry marches if you're an infantry purist so why not constantine definitely niche like he's in my opinion still the best uh, canyon commander cyrus are you we can definitely include him in three plus archer marches like he's not that great uh, but if you're running three four even five archer marches you'll probably have cyrus at some point Edward <laughs> unfortunately goes next to Charlemagne. You know, we have El Cid and Frederick here. I completely missed them. They go into free category. Genghis Khan, no Hannibal Barca, no Harold. Goes into niche right next to Pakal. If you're running Pakal, you probably want to run him with Harold because they are basically like practically the crazy pairing, you know, where you deal a ton of counterattack damage and your hospital bill is just so small. It's a very specific pairing, very niche role, but still. If that's your goal, it's going to be work wonders for you. Jadviga goes into Rally Garrison. Oh man, this is going to hurt me a lot, but Leonidas, my man, goes into no. Like, goes into Charlemagne category. She goes there. Uh, Chandra Gupta, this guy is very specific. If you are a Veil and you are swarming structures, yes, you want to benefit from the debuff of Chandra Gupta, but if not, no, you just don't mess on him. Minamoto, obviously not that great. Maybe 3 plus cavalry, but I'll probably go into no section because you also need to pay real money for Minamoto. And he's just not that amazing anymore. Like back in the day, in the early days, Minamoto was like the boss, but unfortunately not anymore. Ramses, probably no. Saladin, like he's still one of the best 555 ones in the game, but just like Minamoto, he did fell off pretty massively. Richard now I would say no but Richard has a very specific role which is like he's in my opinion the best sustainer when you are chaining barbarians with a Richard YSG mart so I'm going to put him into niche category but as I said his only role is like being the sustainer being the healer for chaining barbarians Suleiman oh my god niche Babur niche Wuzitian nope Yisun Sin niche and Moctezuma I think goes right next to Charlemagne. So this is our 2024 Rise of Kingdoms tier list. At the top of the list, we have Ho Chu Bing Nevsky, CPO Luce, and Herman with Zhu Ye Liang. These are going to be our absolute best one marches from each troop type. And then once you decide to go up to two marches from any troop type, you are going to include for your infantry, Guan Yu and Sargon, for your archers, Burikao SG, for your cavalry, it's a little bit different. Instead, we are going to split Nevsky and Ho Chu Bing. We are going to use Nevsky and Joan, Ho Chu Bing with William. I've already explained the rest. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next Rise of Kingdoms video. Goodbye.